Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we are talking about how to run a small business, any small business, any service business, through all the cra- craziness and chaos that's going on right now. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from Window Cleaning Resource, and you are here. <laughs> What's up? Thanks for hanging out. I hope uh, I hope you're doing awesome. I hope you're doing well. Um, if it's your first time, have a look around. Now, this is a window cleaning podcast, but it's based for any service company. Uh, if you do carpet cleaning, pressure washing, anything, we talk about the aspects of running a business, not just how to do the business. Actually, we're never going to talk about how to do how to clean a window. It's not us. So have a look around. We are more than 144 straight weeks of this, so you got lots of content to binge on. And if you are one of the cool kids, if you're one of the cool kids or you're going to be one of the cool kids because you do, you watch every episode, you listen to them, you thumbs up, you've written comments, and most importantly, you buy your supplies through me, uh, shameless plug, 862-312-2026, then thank you. It is because of you that I get to uh, be home quarantined and buy my ramen. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know this week, but thank you. It's really, guys, you know small businesses just like anything. I'm in the same boat. Uh, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everybody's buying. Uh, I know this is a turbulent time, but I really do appreciate everybody who's still buying supplies. It really, really means the world to me, so thank you guys very, very much. And if you want to buy them, again, uh, 862-312-2026. If you have any orders, of course, I want to be your rep uh, forever, not just right now, but uh, if you have anything, let us know. I truly, truly appreciate it. Shoot me a text. Be like, yo, it's in my cart, and I can certainly run it. Costs you nothing extra. $0 $0 extra towards you to let me put that in for you, but I get credit for it. So high five to me. Huh? Huh? Anyway, um, I do want to first off and start by saying that um, I still want to have this kind of be lighthearted, but there's also the truth to the situation. Um, so in this time where we're dealing with a lot of uncertainty, that's the big thing. Um, we know that uh, as far as the virus works itself, it's not going to more than likely uh, get anybody that is a window cleaner uh, severely sick uh, because of the age demographic. Um, most of you are healthy. Some of you smoke, which doesn't help you. That's uh, one big thing on the respiratory thing. But it's really the economical uncertainty. And the big thing in economics, not to get too nerdy on it, bear with me, bear with me, is that it's all uh, vesicular, right? It's, it, it's, it's all connected, right? Uh, my daughter can't, um, you know, have Disney Plus because a window cleaner in California was just sent home from all of his jobs, right? Like it's all connected no matter where you are. So the big thing to understand here is is that not that anybody's worried about zombies or things happening or even really severely worried about an influx in the uh, mortality rate of this. Because again, the the regular flu that happens every year that people don't really bat an eye at. I think last year was 61,000 people in the U.S. died. So we're not looking at mortality rates, you know, because we're ahead of this thing. That's not really the problem. The problem is the economical side. That's where we're going to focus on today um, is the economic side of that. What kind of impact is it going to have on us? Um, Where do we go from here? Like the biggest, biggest, biggest thing. And uh, I I do want to apologize for kind of beating the dead horse in this whole thing. I know there's enough videos on this out there, but I wanted to address it. Um, But it's the uncertainty, and we don't know how quickly we'll be back to semi-regular. We don't know any of that. It happens so fast that what's happening is is that people are more or less, I guess, kind of being hit harder because it happens so stinking quick. So first off, 
hang in to hang in there. It's it it will we will come out of it. It's just how long, right? How long? There was something um, that somebody said. It was T Squeegee actually, um, but he said that he lost. He's like, ah oh, man, I worked so hard and I just lost everyone. Another word of advice on this whole thing is that in any service industry, you didn't lose anyone. You know, you didn't lose them. They're just putting you on hold, especially your regulars, right? If you guys are doing routes, those are the ones that that money is kind of like, you know, a semi-guaranteed. Obviously, finding out it's not now. But those are the jobs that are coming back. Those you're going to have right as soon as everybody goes back to work because they're still going to need it. You know, those are the jobs that are going to be the most secure, of course, but also the houses, residentials, commercials, all the, everybody who had a need for window cleaning is still going to have a need for window cleaning with uncertainty. Everybody just stops everything because they're uncertain. It's the same reason the stocks are doing what they are. There's so much uncertainty that everybody's going, I need my money. They all pull out and then all of a sudden everything crashes down, but it will all come back. Understand that. The need is still there even now for what we provide, even being a luxury service. This, the need is still there. It's just not at a priority level right now. And here's the truth of it. it it's We can advertise and everything, but you also can't necessarily fault somebody like a restaurant who is now told, I'm in North Carolina, all of our restaurants are closed. All of our bars are closed. It would be unfeasible for us to assume that we're still cleaning the windows on a um, restaurant that is not open. They are not going to be open for the foreseeable future, right? Or they're doing what we are is just takeout stuff. People aren't in there. So there's no real need. They're not even making enough money to basically keep the lights on, much, much less pay a window cleaner. So I understand the certainty... Um, the uncertainty and I understand kind of where everybody's going and we just we're like every other industry we're getting hit here's another good point is they were talking about HVAC HVAC is air conditioning air you know heating and that type of thing and uh, one of the guys was uh, in Florida talking about that they just have no work in 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 HVAC so every industry is getting hit so we have to just kind of we have to understand that this is where it's going. It happened so quick that none of us could fight it. It just happened. Um, but the biggest thing that we can kind of do is is kind of bring our minds down, kind of relax in the whole situation, understand the scope of it, and understand this is a temporary setback. There's a lot of people this time of year or this time of you know the economy where it's at, a lot of people are going to jump they're going to bail and they're going to try to get to another industry that can pay them, which is understandable. But those jobs aren't there either. If you're not essential, they're closing stuff down. Like that's where this is all going. So running to a different industry and leaving all that you've built behind is going to be very tough. There's onboarding. People are just not hiring in any industry right now unless you're stocking shelves in a grocery store. And if you're doing that temporarily just to get through this, cool. It's going to bring in some kind of income, right? Um, but the big thing is just to kind of relax. It's really, really hard to do. This is out of everything we're talking about. This is going to be the hardest thing to do because again, we're a male driven industry. Um, I'm sorry for the ladies out there. You, you know, if you've looked around, uh, window cleaning in general, uh, pressure washing, and we are the providers like yell at me all you want about having uh, gender roles, but that's kind of how we are. That's just how we feel. You know, this whole thing is going to be harder on us than we know as far as just the uncertainty and how do we provide and all that. So the biggest thing we can do is try to just relax and not add pressure to ourselves for all of this. It's going to happen. We're on a water slide. No matter what you do, you're still going to go down the water slide. You can't take a different, to you can't take a different path. There just isn't a way, but we can kind of help it along. We can also be ready for when this happens because I'm a nobody, again, just some guy with a microphone. But I feel like when this is all said and done, because of our, econ our economy was going where it is, as soon as this slump is done, it's going to ricochet and it's going to be even better than it was before. So we're going to have an epic, 
epic year once everything starts to come back. I will tell you that for certainty, um, at least that's my opinion. Um, So being ready for that, that's big, right? There's still a lot of people who are buying supplies right now. People are wanting to get gear in. They want to get ready and prepped so that as soon as this goes, because as fast as it came in is as fast as it's going to go out. And as soon as that happens, you got to be ready. So relax and keep understanding that this is a temporary thing, right? And as soon as we get out of it, it's going to be gangbusters because now we're going to be in season. Right now we're on the cusp of season. And that's also why this is hitting us so hard. If this was in the middle of, you know, May or something, we'd be cash rich and all of us would be a lot better off than coming right out of winter, which we've already used our cash throughout the winter we're getting ready to start ramping back up and now this all happens so be ready for the just craziness but understand this is all temporary this is a temporary thing and we can get through that Uh, we we can it's gonna suck there's gonna be tears but we can get through that um understand that that is a uh temporary thing at least that's my opinion my opinion's wrong sometimes. Probably a lot of times. Uh, let's say another thing. Speaking of opinions wrong. I've never been um, uh, posted something that got such a negative response. But uh, there's a stimulus check that is going to be coming out potentially. The only way a stimulus check works is by people spending that money. They have to spend it. Everybody's like, oh, well, they're going to spend it on bills. Well, that's awesome. They she, Obviously... Obviously, you should spend it on bills. But if people are going to be taking that money, instead of paying bills, they're going to be putting it into the economy where the stimulus works. We're going to be having a potential just giant sum of money coming back into the economy to help push things back up. Uh, Maybe we're at that. Maybe people know you're a small business. I've heard a lot of stories in that. People are like, hey, you know what? I know you're a small business. Dude, just clean the outsides, right? Do that. We're going to talk about that in a second. But you go do that, I know that's going to help you. There's a lot of that. That's awesome. That helps the whole thing go, right? But get on board for that. When that happens, again, we need to be ready. Um, Again, even with that, I think it's just going to go just crazy when it does happen because everybody's going to want to be putting back into the economy. And this time, there's such an awareness of the small business being affected so incredibly hard that I really think that the hashtag save a small business is going to be kind of really taking off as far as, you know, people wanting to just help get people back on their feet. It'll be very interesting to see. A bit of good news, though, as I'm recording this today, which is late in the week, um, uh, China, Wuhan, actually, they had their first day of no recorded new cases. Uh, I believe that's what I read. Um, so that's if that's true and it's not you know politics or government that's amazing that means that they're on the other side of the curve they've flattened and they're coming back down if you're coming back down that is the scope of it so hopefully again this is going to be really pretty quick hopefully but what can we do what can we do is there anything we can do to try to make some money because again if you got no money right we've spent our cash reserves Um, if we have no money, but now we are trying to do something, is there anything we can do? And there is something that we can do. Now, I don't want you to think that this is going to be anything anywhere comparable to kind of where it should be this time of year, but we can call a residential people. You can do your normal mail uh, calling list a little early and there's a downside and a pro side. The downside is you're going to have a lower close rate than normal. But the upside is you're going to miss it anyway. Because even if this thing fixes itself in two, three weeks, well, you're still going to be two, three weeks from there before people start feeling a little bit normal. And then they still have it in their brain. So now you're six weeks out. You're going to miss your spring window. So if you do your residential call and say, hey, uh, I know with everything going on right now, we're a small business. Uh, I would still love to do some services for you. We're doing an outside only special for 99 bucks. Something like that. Whatever it works out, it looks like for you. You're outside. Outside only means people don't have to come in contact with you. It means that you take in the way of the fear. 
people know that they're going to help you. And if you explain that you're helping them, hey, I'm sorry, you know, we just, we don't have a lot of income right now. And I would love the opportunity to be able to help you and, uh, you know, do a job for you, that kind of thing, where people understand that they're helping that is going to be a good saving grace. There's a few companies that have already started that calling their residential people. And there is uh, still positivity. You're not going to have because, again, some people are just locked down. And we totally understand that. But remember, our clientele is not somebody who lives paycheck to paycheck usually. Usually, 80 85% are people that have disposable income. Are not going to get affected as much with a two-week kind of shutdown like they would in you know somebody who lives paycheck to paycheck. So there's a potential there to get work, and even if it's less than you normally would, it's something. We've locked down everything else. We're not spending like crazy. We you know are trying to just keep things so we can keep the lights on and our families fed. That's something. Call your residentials, offer specials on exteriors. It is not the time to go and do general ads. Is not the time because people are not out there looking for new services. They're looking to help somebody they know. And your residential customers, you've already done them. They know who you are. They've talked to you. They've fallen in love with your, your text or yourself. They're wanting to help you out. So call your residentials. It's something that can definitely bring in some income. Um, now, you kind of burn the bridge for the call if you're doing it. But we're, we'll advertise and worry about that later. Right now, we're worried about the next few weeks. So call your residentials. Put that out there. Don't, again, my opinion, do whatever you want. But don't go just advertising for new business. Like I said, somebody who is sitting at home right now, yes, they want to help. But they're more likely to help somebody they know. And they know you if they've already done services there. If they haven't, they're not looking for, oh, we should hire somebody new right? So something to think about, don't advertise necessarily. You're not going to get the return that you want. Now, if you already got mailers printed up with expiration dates, send them. Like you still could get something. Um, that part's up to you in deciding, but uh, don't go out there trying to send. It's not going to drum up new business. Nobody's looking to drum up new business. That's I'm telling you. Um, but exterior window cleaning, that's going to be really, really big. Um, Another thing to do that is not going to be received well from employees, and I'm sorry already in advance, but it's it's doing layoffs. Um, you need to do layoffs as soon as possible so that they're that much closer to being able to collect. Um, they've seen already uh, over a 30% increase in a lot of uh, unemployment claims. And the thing is, is if we wait too long, then they're not able to claim. So another part of it is if you're trying to make payroll and there's no work, a problem is, is that you are going to expend all of your lines of credit and everything trying to keep things afloat when we also still don't know how long it's going to go. So you may go pay them a little bit and then they still have to go on unemployment and now they're not collecting as much as they would have or where they're going. It also is going to free up a lot of um, freedom for you to try to just make enough money so that you don't have to close your doors. Again, if you have techs and you're somebody who's in the office getting work for them, maybe now you're doing some cleaning of the jobs that you still do have and you've had to lay off some techs. I'm sorry to the employees, like none of us want that, but it's best for everybody right now to do that very, very fast. So if you have people, uh, do layoffs. Um, another thing that you can do to kind of ease the burden is to contact your uh, companies that um, have lent to you. A lot of them now, that is what they're doing, is they're trying to save this also. They don't want people to go bad. They're willing to work with you. They're willing to postpone a month or two on the payments. Um, and that can be on your property. It could be on your mortgage. It could be on your trucks. It could be on a lot of that stuff. What you don't do if you postpone payments, it's still your equipment. Don't drop insurance. Don't drop any specifics that hinder you from actually doing work. There's nothing worse than not being able to do work when work is there. 
like that is shooting yourself in the foot. It's like, hey, we wanted to uh, we want to save money by not advertising. Well, then you're not getting new work. You you've, you've you're you're shooting yourself in the foot. Um, but you can still postpone payments. Um, you can do deferrals. Um, usually, it's super easy. Usually, you can call and again, I'm not a financial guy, but I know people who've done this. Um, but you can call and say, hey. Uh, I'm wondering if there's any deferral. If you've had great payment history, I know I'm hearing that there's like usually they are okay with X amount per year of payments or something. I don't think it's a set number like that, um, but maybe that helps. Maybe you push, you know, $2,500 worth of payments that you normally would make, make that not have to be due right now. If you do that, now you have $2,500 less you have to make right now. Something to think about. Again, I would rather see you eat than make a payment on anything. Um, so that's one of the other big things to do. Pairing that with layoffs and removing a lot of your financial burden right now is going to be big on if you need to make less or you have less bills, then you don't need to make as much to get through. Like if you had no bills right now and you could make $1,500, which we know we could do super quick, $2,000, that's enough to just get food and fuel and everything else for the month if you had no bills right so you either drop your bills or we raise your income we know we can't raise the income so if we can drop the bills the income that we are getting is going to go that much farther right again we need to relax on all this and just figure out sensibly like okay here's what we can do here's where the changes we can make we don't know maybe this does last two weeks high five to the economy and the world yes it doesn't matter, but right now we need to look at the long term and plan as much as we can. Um, so that's something to definitely look at. I know it's not something we want to do because, again, deferrals mean you're paying an extra 30 days of interest and the total loan, but we're not worried about that right now. I'm telling you, you got to know what to worry about and worry about the now, not the future because we don't know the future. The future is so uncertain. This thing came in so quick and so just like unbelievably that we don't know how it's gonna it's gonna exit on a side note on this as much as this is just probably i mean i went through 2008 obviously the crash uh, in business and this is way worse way worse this is the most insane thing i've seen in my entire life entire in our entire generation so just being able to live through this is pretty interesting so it sucks. It, it really, really sucks, but um, it, it, it still is interesting economically. I'm going to say one other thing. <clears throat> if you're listening now, you've listened to all this, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about me. My wife is a nurse, um, and she, we went to D.C. Uh, a couple weeks ago, a week ago. Well, we were in D.C. before all this really, really hit. There actually was a case uh, in D.C. where we went, a couple cases. And we're like, whoa, that's crazy. There's like none anywhere. Well, we came back and just the travel in general, DC and just things, we got sick. I didn't, of course, but uh, my wife did. My wife's in healthcare. Uh, she is deals with cancer patients. So there's a fancy word for that that I can't think of right now. <clears throat> and they don't have immune systems in general. So she got back, she got sick, ended up getting a fever. And because of that, had to get tested. So she was on quarantine for five days to start while they had the tests come back. It was over a weekend, so that's why it seemed so long. Um, the test came back negative. She's great, I can get back to work. No, because you're in DC, it's a hot spot. We're gonna have you stay off for another two weeks. So she's now gonna be out of work for weeks and weeks and weeks just because of where we went. So all industries are getting hit with this. All industries are getting hit with this. So it, when I'm talking about all this stuff, don't think that I'm somehow not in. I mean, it, we're, we're for, on our end, uh, I made myself available a lot more uh, regularly and we're getting hit extremely hard too. So there is no industry and there is no, um, there's no avenue that we can bypass getting affected by this. So anyway, whatever. Jumped off on that one. Um, another thing that I would love to see you guys do, um, and again, my opinion, it's just, it's, 
is it's work eight hours. If you don't have eight hours of work, you can still work eight hours. Like there is still things to do that we can still take this time. And instead of just, you know, having it suck, we can still go and do some optimization on our websites. We can get new pictures uh, uploaded. We can go get the Photoshop stuff done. We can get printed things uh, done. Even if you don't have the money to get the printing, you can still get everything finalized so that when you do, you pull the trigger to get the print, right? You can, you know, clean the trucks. You can wax the trucks. You can, there's so many things that we can still do to better our business when things come back. I really dislike when I see somebody like um, just not doing anything. I feel like then it's wasted time. Because we're going to be so busy during the busy season that right now we could utilize this time. So I'd love to see you guys still working eight hours a day. Um, maybe that's less than you normally work, but just something so you're still doing. Maybe you know, you're know you not out there going to get new work, but you're working on your business. There's a lot of other things that you could work on. So I would like to see that. I would like to see that. But the biggest thing on all this, again... T Squeegee, one of the people who brought this up, but um, when this is all done, there's going to be people who rise from the ashes. There's going to be companies that dust themselves off and start things and do it. The downside, and I hate to say it's a pro to some people, but is that the ashes are made from companies that aren't going to make it. And I know for a fact that all of you out there, you're watching and listening to this, you're bettering your business. You always are. That's why you follow the podcast. That's why you're on the forum groups and things. You're not one of those bucket bobs who just doesn't care about their company. So we're going to be the phoenixes that rise. The people who aren't are going to be some of your competitors who just, they jump ship. They don't know what else to do. They can't recover from this. They're not going to take the procedures that you're going to And unfortunately, you're going to lose some competition out of this. It's just got to happen. The benefit to that is if you're what rises from the ash, your company will be that much farther off. It'll be that much better. And when you do come back, this year could be absolutely epic for you. This could be the best year you've ever had still with all of this. I don't, it's so easy to lose hope on all this. It's so easy. But I don't want you to lose hope. I don't want you to think that this is where we are and this is what's going to happen permanently because it's not. This is a temporary situation. We just don't know how long temporary is. And I think it's going to be fast. I think it's going to be very, very fast. I think that stimulus economy is going to come back. And I think when things do come back, when people go back to work, there's going to be so many people out there who are trying to help the small business because they know. And we're going to be ready for it. We're going to go back to work as normal. We're going to keep doing what we do. And we're going to keep up uh, our companies. It's just got to happen. It just has to happen smartly. And again, if you're listening to this or you're watching this, you're one of those people who's already bettering themselves. And not just because it's this. That does not a cocky thing. If you're taking the time to listen to a podcast about window cleaning businesses or service businesses in general, you give a dump about your company. You care. And if you care, we're going to get through this way better than the other companies who they don't even know forums or Facebook groups exist. It's just how long is it going to take us? Hopefully quick. Hopefully this wasn't a morbid uh, episode, but it's the timing. I got to get one of these out. We'll go back to being like normally businessy next week, of course. Um, but. I don't want to push the sales things too much because I know uh, you guys are hurting also. But if you are looking to buy anything, um, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off. And of course, free shipping uh, with this code if you order through me. And uh, uh, the code this week is going to be ASHES. ASHES. ASHES is the code. code. You let me know ASHES on the phone. You text me. You email me, whatever. My number again is 862-312-2026. Save that. Speed dial, man. Uh, Let me know that code and you'll get 5% off. Um, Also, 
if you need help, if you truly need help, uh, we want to give you some free rubber. Just free rubber for nothing. Just ship it to you, whatever. If you put any order in, we could throw it in. But we want to help. We want to help you. We don't know how we can help. Because again, even if we did a big sale or something, you still got to buy stuff. So we're trying to find a way to just help people. If you need help, let me know and I'll sell you, send you a 12-pack of rubber. Hopefully that helps a little bit, just gets you through, gets you the supplies you need. But if you need anything, again, 862-312-2026, let me know. I would love to put it in for you, big or little. It does not matter. We're all in this together. Hopefully we're going to get through this nice and fast. Hopefully you go back and uh, binge a bunch of episodes. They're all a lot lighter than this one uh, from here. But go back, listen to whatever you need to. Uh, call me. If you guys got questions too, if you want to talk about anything business-wise, my email is jersey at windowcleaner.com. Like if you need somebody to talk to business-wise, let's talk. Send me a message. We'll uh, we'll talk about it and uh, hopefully it kind of ease you up. Hopefully this episode didn't scare you. It uh, got you to kind of relax and, and hopefully we're going to get through this fast. So until next week, go out there and be epic.